Jacob M. presents Prime Ministerial Prime Elections Ministerial in Elections Canadian History. The 20th Canadian federal election took place on June 11, 1945 after Prime Minister Mackenzie King's term came to an end and Governor General Alexander Cambridge dissolved Parliament. As the war in Europe came to an end in May of 1945, Mackenzie King felt it was time to call an election. After his electoral victory in 1940, Mackenzie King focused most of his time on aiding the Allies during the war. Shortly after the 1940 election concluded, King introduced conscription for troops to defend Canada if it was necessary. This was because he was still against conscription for soldiers to fight overseas. He also introduced the National Resource Mobilization Act, which allowed the government to register men and women and move them into jobs necessary for wartime production. The Conservatives during this time went through another leadership election after Mannion resigned. To replace him, the Conservative Party chose now Senator Arthur Meehan to serve as the party's interim leader until a new one was elected. At the convention, there were five candidates, but only four stood out. There was Henry Herbert Stevens, the the former leader of the Reconstruction Party, who originally left the Conservatives as a protest against R.B. Bennett but rejoined the party in 1938. Murdoch McPherson, the former Attorney General of Saskatchewan, was back giving the leadership another try after not winning it in 1938. John Diefenbaker, the Member of Parliament for Lake Centre. And finally, there was John Bracken, the Premier of Manitoba, who was recruited by Arthur Meehan to run despite never running for a Conservative Party in his life. A few months before the convention, the party held a conference in Port Hope on Ontario and changed the party's name to the Progressive Conservative Party. The name change was done to appeal to more progressive policies such as support for veteran employment, farming, social security, health, national labor relations, and national resources. John Bracken, who served as the Premier of Manitoba for the Provincial Progressive Party, supported these policies as they aligned with his viewpoints the most. In the end, John Bracken won on the second ballot. He wasn't far off from winning on the first ballot, receiving a dominant 48.3% of the vote from the delegates. Bracken became the third elected leader of the Conservative Party. By 1944, it was obvious that there was a manpower shortage, especially in French-Canadian regiments. The Conservatives were pressing the government and even the Governor General to enact conscription. King didn't want to enact conscription. He knew how bitterly divided the nation was after Prime Minister Robert Borden enacting conscription in 1917. And so he tried avoiding conscription as much as possible, even going as far as replacing his Minister of Defense with a retired general to inspire more Canadians to enlist. List. That didn't help him and as a result, Mackenzie King introduced a referendum to enact conscription. After a majority of Canadians voted yes to conscription, the Prime Minister passed Bill 80, allowing conscripts of the home garrison to be sent overseas to fight. This introduction of conscription wasn't as divisive as the conscription crisis of 1917. However, many Quebec Liberals resigned, but it wasn't enough to damage King's reputation or diminish the image of the Liberal Party. Going into the election, the Liberals campaigned on a return to normalcy at home after the war in Europe ended. They ran with the slogan, build a new social order, promising to spend more money on land, jobs, and business for returning veterans, build more housing, and establish a new industrial bank, all with the promise of reduced taxes. The Progressive Conservative Party, meanwhile, benefited from a mid-election Ontario Provincial Progressive Conservative Party victory. The party shifted their campaign to Ontario, where the new Conservative Party won, as they believed the majority could only be won by winning the most seats in Ontario. As the war in Europe ended, Ended, the war in Asia seemed to be far from over as the Allies were preparing for an invasion of the Japanese home islands. Bracken promised that if the invasion of Japan took place and he was Prime Minister, he would keep conscription in place. This caused a lot of voters, especially in Quebec, to go back to supporting Mackenzie King and the Liberals who promised he wouldn't enact conscription if the invasion of Japan occurred. The CCF during this time had seen a surge of popularity. The party won a provincial majority in Saskatchewan, becoming the first socialist party in power in North America. Their leader J.S. Woodsworth left the party due to failing health and was replaced by Saskatchewan CCF Premier Major James Coldwell. Coldwell promised to keep war taxes on the wealthy while decreasing them for the poor in order to fund social services. Controversially, he promised to abolish the Senate, which angered a lot of Canadians who still supported the British monarchy. The Socreds, meanwhile, tried to capitalize the positive image of the Alberta Provincial Social Credit Government. They advertised their monetary reforms and the overall good image of Alberta Premier William Aberhart, and here are the results. 
Mackenzie King won, returning to Parliament as Prime Minister. He won 118 seats, 61 less than in the previous election, and returned to Parliament with a minority government. King's minority wouldn't last as eight independent Liberals were elected, which joined King and bumped his seats up to a majority government. He received 39.78% of the popular vote. The Progressive Conservative Party finished in second with 67 seats, 28 more than in the previous election. Bracken won more seats than Mannion before him, but struggled to form government as Canadians didn't want conscription. He received 27.62% of the popular vote. In third place was the CCF with 28 seats, 20 more than in the previous election, rewarding them with being the third largest party in terms of seats in the House of Commons. They received 15.55% of the popular vote. In fourth place were the Socreds with 13 seats, 3 more than in the previous election, and 4.05% of the popular vote. The Social Credit Party won all their seats in Alberta since they were unable to persuade other voters to help elect them. Bravo!